Maggie. Maggie. There she is. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hi, lay down. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Good morning, Bill. Bill. Oh, got one, and my fishing pole broke. Yep, I got a fish, and my glue joint snapped. I may not be able to catch fish, but I know I can make coffee. Get our lemon cake out of our box pot and get boiling some water. There's that glorious first sunlight. Lemon cake and coffee. Oh yeah, baby. In nature's cafe. Set up a kitchen fit for a king. I'm gonna use my canvas bag so that I don't have to put my cast iron pan right in the dirt. Set up the five inch firebox on top of our pedestal. Just like that. Well, you can see this is a nice deep pan. I think if you cut the backbone out of a whole chicken, I think you could get it to fit in there. Now in order to pull off this roast, I had to custom make a prototype for a rack because I didn't want the roast to be right down there in the jus. I've got a lot of moving parts here. That cutting board wants to rotate. Fish jumping out there, just teasing me. I know. Something scary, I'm sure. The potato and the onion are from my dad's garden, so garden fresh. Very nice stuff. I've got this big piece of fire starter in here, so I'll be able to drop big chunks of wood in right away. I want a lot of heat right here at the beginning, and then having hot coals will be great. So we'll just go ahead and load it right up. We may as well put the cast iron casserole dish in its position right now while everything's cold and just let it get heating up. We're heating up nicely. We'll start with this fatty side. Get some fat on the pan. Mmm, looking nice. Look at that beautiful beef. Holy smokes. Well, maybe we can just add all this stuff because I don't want the onions and garlic to burn. This other stuff will help cool the pan down a little bit. Keep it moving. We got quite a bit of heat.
I'm gonna add just a little bit of my beef bouillon water. This will cool things down a little bit, but it'll also deglaze. salt just because potatoes are always hungry for salt I'll put a little pepper as well oh that smells so good and we'll put the veggies back in a little bit later uh, but I don't want them to overcook cover up my veggies and we'll just let those sit over here until we've had the beef going for at least a couple of hours so I'm gonna go ahead and drop my beef in there We'll cover it up. So this is good hardwood charcoal. Uh, the wood up here is all white pine, which is not very good. So what this does is this will cool the temperature of things momentarily because things are a little hot in my, uh, in my casserole pan. And I don't want to move fast. I want this to be a very slow cook. Let's see how it goes. I set up a shelter for us and for Bill. Okay, I just refueled the stove. Uh, the temperature got a little low. It's down to 140. Um, the temperature has been ranging between 140 and 190 is the hottest it's gotten so far. And uh, we've been running two hours and 20 minutes. The wind was stoking up my fire a little bit and got the temperature going a little too high. So I just took it off the flame for a minute. Go ahead and take the top off. And I think this is going to be a two handed operation if I can get a hold of this rack. And I'll just lift this up ever so carefully. I do not want to lose this. Well, look down in there. Look at that. It's starting to look good. All right. All right. And we'll just let it finish. We're halfway there. Three more hours. We got some neighbors, so everybody's all excited because they have dogs. So they've been barking and letting their presence be known. But it looks like those guys are going to wait out and do some fly fishing. Okay, it's been four hours and the temperature's been right around 160 inside the oven. You can see it's just a very slow simmer.
five and a half hours in the making and I'm ready to eat. So let's go ahead turn this over. Okay, let's go ahead and put the meat down in there. Take the rack out. Ho ho ho, look at that. Holy smokes. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. Dump the rest of that out on there. And I'm ready to eat. In fact, what I'm going to do is move this to the side. And I'm going to put this up here so it'll stay nice and warm. So have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Okay, let's just see what it looks like if I do cut it in half. I do have a little bit of rosemary. I'm just going to put a little bit of that. Just give it a, a real kind of fresh flavor. I love what rosemary does for beef. And all of this is very beef flavored because of all of that au jus that has been reduced down to just a really nice kind of a glaze really. The carrots and potatoes are soft, but they're not mushy like if I'd left them in there the whole time. Mm. Very good. I brought these cinnamon rolls frozen and they were vacuum sealed frozen but when they started to rise they uh, they puffed up the vacuum bag pretty cool when it finally got the glob out of the bag let's see if I can make them look like cinnamon rolls Perfect. Do a little extra butter on them. We'll put the lid on. And we'll move over some charcoal. Alright. There's a good breeze going. Maybe it'll help stoke these charcoals. Those charcoals weren't going very well, so I decided to start a fire on top of them, get the charcoals going a little better, get a little more heat up here on top. Let's just take a look, make sure we're not getting too much heat. Hoo-hoo, just starting to get brown there in one spot. I think my cinnamon rolls are done. Let's take a look. 
Hoo hoo hoo. Look at those beauties. Let's see. Yeah, I think they're done. I think they're ready. Cream cheese frosting onto them. No, Maggie, go on. This isn't for dogs. Especially naughty dogs like you. Ho ho ho. Look at that. Well, I'll have dessert for breakfast again, it looks like. Mm. Wow, that's good. Let's look at the bottom. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Mm. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, those are good. Mm. Heck yeah. Mm. Bill seems to like his shelter. We have ourselves a little bit of a situation. 